Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel or welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Katherine Young and I'm a creative. And today's video, we are about to get spooky with some simple thrift flip crafts. Oh, I just, I can't wait. So today we are gonna do three spooky thrift flips. And what's so exciting is these basically just need some paint very basic items to thrift that almost anyone can find and these have a big impact now we are going to start with the TikTok viral trend and we're going to add a ghost to a painting now this is a secondhand painting i got in an auction lot it was an extra it just came with the lot and i think this is perfect to paint a ghost this canvas is already pretty dirty and pretty beat up lots of yellowing happening, and this frame is just fantastic. Now, I saw somebody do this ghost, uh, this ghost painting trend, and they actually sprayed the frame black, and they let the overspray go on the painting. Now, if I can find the picture that inspired me about this, I will put it up here, uh, but I just thought it looked really haunting, really good. So that's what we're gonna do today. So this, is a pretty easy flip. All you need to do is find a picture at the thrift store that you like. It doesn't even need to be a scene like this. It can be anything that you like. You can just paint a ghost in it. But I think you're gonna really like how this one turns out. So initially, when I was looking at the back of this, I thought maybe I would remove the print and so that I could get kind of that black vignette gradient really nice and pristine without trying to do it in the frame but somebody really 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 wanted this print to stay in this frame so i kind of gave up on that <laughs> so i just was very very careful with how i spray painted kind of went back and forth multiple times and slowly creeped up to create that vignette look and i think it turned out wonderfully actually I was really impressed with how I was able to get it very kind of consistent, but it took me a little time. After I did the spray paint, it was time to paint in the little ghosts. And whenever somebody does a kind of like thrift store flip of a painting, I always recommend if you're going to put like one thing in the painting, put more paint on the painting than that one thing, because then that spot of paint that you painted on isn't so jarring. It doesn't stick out so much to the eye. When you watch YouTube videos showing people adding stuff to thrift store paintings, you don't necessarily notice how jarring it is to have paint on top of a flat print. It doesn't read on camera, but in real life it really does show up. So I always highly recommend painting other parts of the canvas. And for me also, I kind of wanted to get this more of a fall vibe. This piece, even though it has yellowed over the years, still looked kind of spring. So I went in with some fall colors. Now I'm not gonna show you the ghosties I painted. I wanna save that to the reveal. However, so I was looking at this and I totally got artist indecision. I was looking at the frame and although I really liked the look it had, I felt like I really lost dimension of the frame and it really needed some of that back and I thought I could really make the frame pop again. And so I dry brushed gold onto the frame. There is a style of antique frames that I just love that are black and gold and I think this will be very reminiscent of it. And it's going on a black and gold shelf. I forgot to film it, I'm so sorry. But the technique really is just putting paint on a paper towel and then you go back and forth with your brush so that the brush is in effect dry and then you paint over things. And it worked out so well on this frame. I think it looked amazing. Okay, let's show you how this all turned out. So this is my final piece. I am so happy with it. I can't, yeah, I had no idea it was gonna turn out this well. Y'all, I don't know if this is just Halloween decor anymore. I feel like this thrift flip 
could stay out all year in my home. I love it so much. I mean, just look at this. It is fantastic. And I had so much fun hiding the little ghosts in it. Uh, there are two that are fishing and then there is one in the home. I also put some little jack-o'-lanterns in the window in the home. I just think this turned out so beautifully. This is a really great thrift store DIY. And you don't have to have um, the fancy frame like I did. You don't have to do the dry brushing. You don't have to do anything I did. But I hope this inspires you because this is totally a great uh, thrift flip DIY. So thank you so much, TikTok. Now, the second thrift flip we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little spooky votive village. This is a super duper easy thrift flip. Really, all it takes is some spray paint. Now, for the longest time, I wasn't like on board with like the little houses thing. I thought it was just like too much like how my mom decorated. It just wasn't my jam. But I was really inspired by the YouTube channel Radis Radis. And they have been repainting a lot of ceramics and making them spooky. And I was like, you know what? I can get on board with this. Let's give it a try. So I picked up these little, little houses. And what I really liked about these is they had a lot of texture and they had a lot of like, like turrets. So I picked these up at a thrift store. You can find these at thrift stores all the time. Um, I paid $1.99 each and I picked up three of them. I really like the shape of this one really looks like a witch's house. These might have been even at a dollar store. They might have even been cheaper when they were first sold. But these are the ones we're going to spray paint. So I think this is going to give a really spooky look and it's going to be pretty simple. Now, spray painting the houses was actually harder than I thought it was. Because of all the angles and how small they were, the spray paint kept missing little parts of the houses. So. I definitely had to let things dry, go back, move them around, get different angles. So it actually, the houses were a little more tricky than I thought they were going to be, but I think they turned out so good. I think they look amazing just black. I think they actually look quite high end without doing uh, any dry brushing. I thought about doing dry brushing like I did on the frame, but I think these look good just as is. I did give them one final coat of a matte uh, spray fixative, which I keep on hand. And I think that really did help kind of make these feel a little more high end, a little more of a satin finish than a gloss. And like, how cute is that with a little light in it? Very, very cute. I think these are a super easy DIY, very easy to thrift, very easy to do. In fact, if I were to paint these again, I would recommend just painting with a paintbrush. I don't think you need to use spray paint. I think that's almost just too much work. And yeah, the look is striking. So for our last thrip flip, uh, there's a trigger warning here. We are gonna talk about spiders. So if this is not for you, maybe it's the time to bounce out. So you've probably seen, there's lots of tutorials on YouTube of how to do this how to make real spiderweb art. So first things first, is I got a bunch of secondhand little frames, these little vintage frames, and you can get frames at your at a dollar store, at thrift stores. I really like these, uh, they're made in Italy style ones. Uh, they're getting a little harder to find, but they were so mass produced that you probably can find these um, if you spend a few months looking, you'll probably find these. Um, and I'm gonna take the artwork out and then we are going to go and get some artwork of real spider webs. So what I did is I cut out some uh, black, just construction uh, like scrapbook paper, so it's a little thicker. And I cut it into squares that are going to fit into my little frames here. Then all you need is some white spray paint and some fixative. Now being an artist, I always have fixative on hand. So really all I needed to go buy was the white spray paint. Then next you just go look for spider webs. Now I can tell you right now, there were plenty in my house, but I don't want to use spray paint in my home. <laughs> 
So I went out and I went looking for spider webs and I can tell you this was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I thought I was gonna find a bunch, but really um, I didn't find that many that weren't really close to the ground. And one thing these tutorials tell you is you have to push right through the spider web to make it work. So I just really wasn't finding many that worked for that kind of push through thing. Um, what I did end up finding was a spider web on like a tennis court. Uh, don't worry, I did, uh, you know, bring a towel to clean up and I was pretty careful and I don't think I ruined anything with the spray paint. But I did find some spider webs to push the paper through. Uh, and y'all, I'm really, really impressed with how well this worked. Now, one thing I did notice is my spider webs weren't like these perfect spider web images. I would say that is the one drawback with this. Unless you have like the perfect spider web, it's not gonna be quite that like perfect spider web feel. But this is mother nature, right? Like it just might not be perfect. Now I was able to get two webs while I was out, but as you can see, they're a little bit more chaos than perfect spider web. But I think I have enough here to fill all three of my frames. But really the hardest part was finding the webs. Now, once I got my spider webs, I laid down the glass from the different picture frames and kind of moved them around to see if I could get, uh, you know, all three of them on there. And I could, it worked out well. Now I always recommend to put the glass down, not the back of a frame, to try to see what you wanna do if you're cutting out a picture. It just works so much better. You can see exactly what you're gonna see in the frame. Now I only had one that the picture was like stuck to the glass that I needed to wash off and get that picture off. That was the hardest part of this entire project. In fact, I actually cut my finger on that glass trying to get the picture off. So uh, the only danger in this project is apparently the glass. <laughs> but just look how great these turned out. I could not be happier. They look amazing. I really didn't realize that this one was gonna be so easy. The hardest part really was trying to find a spider web that was beautiful and classic. And even though I didn't find beautiful and classic spider webs, I think these look amazing. And it's so cool to know that that's, that's a real spider web in there. Like that's just a really cool thing to know and a really cool thing to add to the core. So how easy is that? A little spray paint, some black paper, just thrift some frames, really neat Halloween decor super easy DIY. After cutting out the uh, different ovals, I did end up having a little bit extra and I think I am going to use those for a project. I'm not gonna throw away these scraps. I am going to take them and I'm going to put them in this locket. So this necklace that I have, this multi-strand necklace, the locket is going to have spider webs in it. So it's gonna be spooky, like undercover spooky. It's gonna be really cool. So I'm using every bit of that natural resource. And let's see all these pieces styled together. I can't get over how good this full vignette looks. Can you believe this entire display is all secondhand? Yes, every piece up there is thrifted. And boy, does it have like the most perfect spooky vibes for Halloween. That is it, y'all. That is today's Thriftoween video. I am so impressed by all these things. I really, I finished these in a few hours. I finished this in an afternoon. That never happens. My projects always take way longer than that. <laughs> so if you like videos like this that have vintage, thrifting, creative projects, and more, please subscribe. I'd love to have you stick around. And if you ring that bell, you'll be the first to know when I next upload. 
So stay creative, y'all, and bye!